Hey guys, we are here in the central plaza of CES, just outside the CNET booth, in a very large space so that we can take a look at a 50 foot snake and a Mondo spider. We'll get to that later, but first, I'm here with one of the creators of Eat Art. So, Charlie, tell me what we're looking at right now. So, this is Titanoboa. It's a 50 foot long electromechanical snake, and it's a, actually a recreation of an ancient dinosaur snake that used to exist 60 million years ago. What, why, why an ancient dinosaur snake? Well, the idea was that the ancient snake um, went extinct because the climate cooled down. So now in the face of modern climate change, we're resurrecting this beast as kind of like a, a, a vehicle to generate discussions about energy issues. Okay, so you guys are trying to make a statement with this 50 foot long mechanical, okay, just tell me how this works. Yeah, like it, well, so this is a project that kind of blends uh, a whole bunch of different disciplines of engineering with art. So that's kind of our, our target is we're going to try and get people excited about engineering and technology using a crazy mechanical sculpture. But, but how is it built? It looks like a spinal cord to me. Yeah, so what you see is there's uh, 20 custom welded aluminum vertebrae. And between all the vertebrae, you've got cylinders that are kind of like the muscles of the snake. Okay. And they work with hydraulic fluid. It's kind of like the blood that pumps through the snake. Okay. So um, you said it's 50 feet, but I noticed that there's a tail sitting over there in the corner. So what happened to the tail? Yeah, so we, we just took the tail off temporarily as we're getting set up here and we're getting rolling because sometimes it tends to whip around and have a bit of a mind of its own. So, Have, have there been any injuries so far? Uh, no. Usually we try and put ourselves between the, the snake and whatever else while it's operating just so that we can... If anybody's going to get uh, damaged, it's going to be us. Okay, good, because I don't want to get damaged. Um, so this thing is 1,200 pounds, and I'm really excited to see it go, and I bet all of you guys are excited to see it. So let's make this thing happen. Okay. Okay. So Everyone sign liability releases. Oh, my God. Woo! Okay, this is insane. I cannot believe how smoothly this thing is just snaking its way through the parking lot. Charlie, don't get hit. Okay, so now I see why the tail was taken off because I do not think that we could handle it. Um. <laughs> so yeah, um, James over there is operating this uh, Titanobo wirelessly with his remote controller. So he has the most awesome job right now. Yeah, he is the snake charmer. He's the perfect driver <laughs> for this machine. And uh, he's communicating with one of the several brains along the spine of the snake. And they're all working in tandem to coordinate that movement. Okay, how long did it take you guys? Okay, I heard you brought this to Burning Man, right? We, we did. So we're, our nonprofit organization called eArt is uh, funded, these products are all funded by grants from organizations like Burning Man and um, sponsorships from uh, companies like Lenovo who brought us here for this event. So, so tell me how the heck you guys uh, managed to keep this thing functioning when you're at Burning Man and we all know it's a dust bowl where things are just flying, you can't breathe, so how the heck did this thing survive? Uh, it was pretty rugged, like we had a lot of technical difficulties that first year and um, you know, dust, contaminating connections and, uh, and things, but we're going to take it back hopefully this year with a lot more robust setup and be able to do different kinds of motion and uh, hopefully have a better time of it. Okay, so I heard that you guys can actually monitor the diagnostics. I don't know if it's for the snake or for the spider via your smartphone. Yeah. Is that true? So we, what, we, what we've got here is okay. this, like, uh, Let's this, show the people. like it's, it's on a tablet, and we've got all the kind of voltages, battery levels, motor speed, pressure, and all the sensor values, so we can see what's going on via Wi-Fi from the snake as it's running. So we've got it working on, like, phones and tablets and stuff. It's just a preliminary version of this app, but um, yeah, it's, it's so great. it's an app. Can I download it? Can I monitor it while I'm uh, at home, wondering how my snake is doing? If you want to? I think you have, you have to be close enough to get the Wi-Fi signal that's coming out of the oh, snake's okay. head. But yeah. okay, so from my hotel room across the street. Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, now, now I want to talk about the spider. Yeah. So, so let's. Uh, want to go over there? And yeah, let's out. do that. Okay, guys, we're moving on to the Mondo spider. All right. 
So you, so first of all, did you actually get your hands dirty? Did you build these things? Yeah. So I, this is this Titanoboa was originally my idea, and then I, I brought more people on board on the team, and as we got more and more into it, I transitioned from doing like welding and hands dirty stuff to more to just kind of being the project organizer. Okay. Because there was about 15 or 20 people working on this thing, all volunteers in the evenings and weekends and stuff. So. Okay, so you bringing up the word volunteers kind of makes me want to ask. Yeah. Is this what you do full time? Is this lucrative? How do you guys, are you guys like all living in one bedroom and no, you know, building all, things by night? We all have our day jobs. We're engineers. Some of us are students, um, artists and uh, technicians, and we just, we all share this kind of common uh, interest of making these crazy machines and we do it in our spare time and and yeah so it's were you expecting it to be such a hit uh no when we first when we first started with this with the spider we just were kind of driven by this desire to make something really cool and then once we had built it it became clear that that desire was kind of we'd hit upon something that was actually valuable and could be enjoyed by lots of other people. Okay, because I am ready to enjoy this thing. Um, the great thing about the spider is that it is actually operated by a person sitting in it, and today that person is going to be me. So, so um, yeah, oh yes. Uh, maybe like uh, John can okay. explain how the spider works. So thank you so much. Yeah. So I have John and Ryan with me. So tell me about how the spider works. Uh, the spider is a big magnificent piece of clockwork. Yeah, it's very. Those are a lot of words. Yeah, it's very easy to operate, as long as you're properly trained. So. Oh, sorry. Real quick, I am not properly trained. Well, let's hopefully we can get you up to being <laughs> properly trained in the next couple of seconds. Oh, perfect. The the first thing you have to do is figure out how to get in. Okay. Uh, and then we'll show you the controls, okay. and some of the emergency safety maneuvers. Okay, but before but before I go in. I'm just kind of curious as to how this works, right? I'm not an engineer, okay. so pretend well, that. Well, it, it's actually a, a totally closed loop zero emissions machine. So we have a mobile solar. That, that makes complete sense to me. You know, one of those. So okay. It, it, we have a mobile solar array, which charges a set of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries like you might see in an electric car. Okay. And then the batteries run electric motors. The motors run hydraulic pumps. The pumps run hydraulic Where motors. are the solar panels? The solar panels are back in Vancouver. Oh, so it's already been charged up. 